Hey guys, Chris Schwartz Edmiston here from Schwartz Edmiston Web Design. Today we are going to be again looking at fixed headers in the Brian template, but we're going to be continuing on and looking at some more advanced examples. And specifically, I want to cover how to make fixed headers when you have an overlay on a banner image. So if we jump into the style editor, the way you do that in the Brian template is to move everything from the top header to the bottom header. So if we scroll down here to the header layout, you can see my branding position is top left, so I'm going to move that to bottom left, and it jumps down below, and then I'm going to also change the primary nav position to bottom right. So now you can see we have this cool header overlay effect, or banner image overlay effect, but the fixed scroll no longer works. So what we have to do is go back to custom CSS and under the position fixed, we have to give it an important. And now if we save that and scroll down, so now it works. But the problem is the header is still transparent because it's, it's still overlaying on this image even when we scroll down. So what we have to do is use jQuery to add a class after we've scrolled down a certain distance, and then we can give the header a background through CSS through the class that we've added. So we have to go to settings, advanced, and then to code injection. And I'm gonna paste in some code right now and I'll walk you through it, what this is basically telling Squarespace. So what this is saying is, basically we're adding jQuery because that helps us execute this function and we're saying, okay, when the window has been scrolled from the top greater than 50 pixels, then a class of scroll nav gets added to the header. And if the window has not been scrolled more than 50 pixels, then it's going to remove that class of scroll nav. So I'm going to save this real quick and we'll jump into the code inspector in Chrome and I'll show you that this is actually working. We just haven't to find any custom CSS yet, so nothing is visually changing, but it should be working. Okay, so here is our header class, and when I scroll down more than 50 pixels, you can see the header gets scroll nav added to it. And I go back up, and it gets taken away, and then I scroll down greater than 50 pixels, and scroll, scroll nav gets added again. Okay, so this is exactly what we want to be happening. So I'm going to copy the scroll nav class, and we're going to go back to our custom CSS. And now visually, we can tell Squarespace what we want to happen when the header has been, or when the page has been scrolled down. Okay, so we're going to create a new class called header dot scroll nav. And now we can define how, what we want the background to look like. So let's say we want the background to be white. So we'll say, okay, background, and I'll give it the hex value of white. So now when I scroll down, cool, it jumps to white. But now we're losing all of our navigation because our navigation is white. So if I jump into Chrome inspect, then we just have to change those as well. Okay, so the header branding gets a class of header branding. So I'm now going to define my styles for the header branding and I want the color to be black and that's the hex value for that is just all zeros. So now you can see, cool, it jumps to black when we scroll down. So now I just have to do the same thing to the nav. If I jump into my Chrome inspect, it gets a class of header nav
So after that, I'm going to add header nav, add some curly brackets, and I'm going to see if this works. We might have to Yeah, I think we have to put an A because we have to target the actual links themselves. No, nope, that didn't work either. A lot of this is just playing around, knowing CSS is so powerful because it really lets you extend the functionality of Squarespace and if you don't know CSS, you're really at a disadvantage because you can't do a lot of these custom things. And when something goes wrong, you don't know how to troubleshoot it. So, um, let's see. I wonder if we just actually have to give this an important, let's, yep, that's all it was. We just had to give it a, a important tag. So now we just have to define the hover styles. So all I'm gonna do is down below, I'm going to say ampersand colon hover. And now we can define the hover styles. So I'm just gonna make the opacity go down a little bit. So I'll do RGBA zero comma zero comma zero. So that would be black, but then I'm going to give it an opacity of let's say like 0.6. It's giving me a syntax error. Oh, I forgot to define the color. Whoops. Okay. So now let's save it. And that didn't work. Let's give it an important and save it, and now when we hover, cool. It's doing exactly what we want it to. Okay, so now we have the header turning white when we scroll, awesome. I don't like that there's no padding on the bottom of the header, so everything's kind of cramped against the bottom. It doesn't, it's not spaced out very even. So um, if we check that out, it looks like Yeah, there's no padding on the bottom and there's 50 padding on the top. So what we could do is we could just say, let's just give it a padding of 50 header dot scroll nav. Let's give it a padding bottom of 50 pixels. Okay. Well, that doesn't look good. That's way too much padding. Okay, so I'm gonna move this down. We'll give it a padding bottom of 10 pixels and save that. And let's see how it looks on the about page. Okay, yeah, that works. I'm gonna jump in here and inspect real quick. Okay, so this header inner class is what's giving it the padding at the top. So when we scroll, I want that header inner to get less padding. So what we're gonna do is under header.scroll nav, we'll come down here and we're gonna add header.inner and we're gonna say padding top. 10 pixels and we'll give that an important cool so now it jumps up now it it's even on both and it's it's skinnier so it's out of the way more you don't want a huge header you know kind of clunking up the user experience as they scroll down the page so I think that looks good to have it kind of out of the way like that um, so that's actually looking really good I'm really happy with that the thing that I, the only thing that I don't like now is that it just kind of like appears. It just like, yeah, it just looks kind of clunky because it just appears. So we got to give it a transition. So what we can do is under dot header, we're going to say transition 
all 0.5 seconds and we'll give it an ease. And then if we save that, when we scroll down, here, I'll get, I'll make it full screen. That's kind of a nice animation. The thing that I don't like is it's just jumping up. It's not inheriting that animation. Um, I don't like that. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the ease, ease too. And we'll do linear. Um, and that's because the header, dot header inner, we have to define its normal state. and give it the transition property as well. So I'm not explaining that very well, but just, just look at what I'm doing um, and the reasons that I'm doing it. And hopefully uh, you'll be able to find this helpful and glean some knowledge from this. Okay, so for the padding top, it's 50 pixels and we're just gonna copy this transition and now when I save it, cool. Now you can see it doesn't just jump up the page, it's like it's got that smooth transition. I think 0.5 seconds is way too long and actually I don't, well, let's try and move down to like 0.2 seconds for the animations. We'll see how that looks. Cool. Actually, I don't like linear. I like ease better. So I'm going to change that back too. Okay. So now if I go back to full screen, cool. That's a super cool effect. It's like big on over the banners. It's got the overlay. And then as we scroll down, it kind of moves up and out of the way. Really, really good user design. It looks awesome. It works on all of our pages, which is great. Continuing on from last time, there's no spacing issues. As we scroll down the page, it moves out of the way. That looks really, really good. All right, guys, so I hope you got something out of this video. I apologize it wasn't super clean and super polished, but you know, CSS oftentimes isn't super clean and super polished. There's a lot of troubleshooting and, and just digging into the code that you have to do to get it to work. So thank you guys. Again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, go ahead and visit my website. You can send me an email or leave a comment down below. Please subscribe to the channel. It's brand new. I'm going to have a ton of content to help you guys out and help you guys create better Squarespace websites. Thanks.